I think George Bush would have done exactly the same thing. Any Democratic president probably would have done the same thing. If Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, had been president uh, and had this capacity, he would have done the same thing. Daniel Clayman, welcome to News Beast. Congratulations on the new book, one of our own. Make Thank us proud. Thank you. Uh, this book, Killer Capture, is extraordinary access into the Obama White House and, and really the president's personal evolution uh, from being a constitutional lawyer to directing drone strikes at specific individuals, making that kill list. Talk to me about, about the, the, the evolution of the president and that drama as you saw it. Well, you know, Barack Obama was elected, at least in part, to wind down the wars of 9-11, right? I mean, he was going to pull the troops out of Iraq, which he's done. He was going to try to win decisively in Afghanistan, but really to then be able to bring them back home. And the last thing he wanted to do was to open up new fronts uh, and to put uh, more troops on the ground in other parts of the world. So in a way, um, the drone program which, by the way, he never actually came out against uh, during the campaign. Actually, he was in favor of it. He's he talked specifically he, about drone strikes that's, in Pakistan. That's absolutely, Very that's absolutely right. Um, so, you know, there is, he does go through an evolution on drones in some respects. But in an important respect, I think this program uh, was very much in line with his sort of basic uh, modus operandi in terms of fighting the war on terrorism. That is to say, it's surgical, it's targeted, it's a way of doing it without putting uh, more troops on the ground. And he didn't want to get sucked into insurgencies in places like uh, Yemen and Somalia. He wanted to be AQ focused, as he would put it, Al Qaeda focused, and drones uh, fit that purpose pretty well. And, and, you know, there is clearly the not Iraq model, the surgical approach to dismantling Al Qaeda that he's been relentless on and, and ranked up a pretty impressive kill list just yesterday, the new number two, Al Libby, uh, killed by a drone strike. But to some people, he reading about the president deliberating over specific kills uh, does bring to mind that obsessive Lyndon Johnson in, during the Vietnam War where he's picking bombing targets. Uh, how does this president, without any military experience, uh, become acclimated to these sort of decisions? And is it part of the office he might like least? You, you know, in a kind of ironic way, um, you know, this is, uh, this is Obama because he didn't have the military experience, wanting to make sure that the military wasn't you know, pulling the wool over his eyes. He was worried that military force has this sort of way of, of spinning out of control. And I think he was advised during the transition, possibly during the campaign, that you've got to watch out. You know, he inherited a military that was shaped by uh, George Bush, Donald Rumsfeld, Donald Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney, that was very much on the go, that was a real killing machine going after people, you know, they, they called it the global war on terrorism, and I think he wanted to, to try to find ways to resist that and, that, and that meant he needed to sort of personally supervise uh, some, of these, uh, some of these activities. One thing I should say is, you know, we talk about the evolution, I mean, he did learn three days into office how messy war can be, and it was really a, kind of a pivotal moment for him. Uh, just hours before he had signed the executive orders uh, calling for the shutting down of Guantanamo, ending torture, shutting down the CIA uh, detention cells, feeling pretty good about restoring uh, constitutional values to the war on terror. And then his third day in office, John Brennan, his chief counterterrorism advisor, comes to him and says, you know, the first drone strike of your presidency has happened, and unfortunately, they got the wrong people. They got a tribal elder right. in, in, you know, South Waziristan and most of his family, and they were innocent. Well, he's pretty shaken by this. He calls in the CIA. He wants to know what, what happened. I mean, he's been told uh, that these are unbelievably precise weapons, uh, these, these drones. Um, and he learns about the, the messiness of war and that the the sort of fog of war can never be entirely lifted. And yet, uh, he continues to support the program. It's a sort of a key inflection point in his presidency, I think. Final question. Has the Obama administration, has President Obama been more effective at targeting and killing al-Qaeda than President Bush? Well, the short answer is yes. But the main reason is because that drone program was really beginning to amp up toward the end of the Bush administration. The reason is technology got a little better, but the main reason is uh, after you know close to eight years of being in Afghanistan, the human intelligence got much better. 
by the time Obama came in, he had the benefits of that intelligence and was able to ramp up the program significantly. I think George Bush would have done exactly the same thing, and I think any Democratic president probably would have done the same thing. And I think if Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, had been president uh, and had th this capacity, he would have done the same thing. Well, Daniel Kamen, great new book, Killer Capture. Thank you very much. Thanks, for John. Appreciate it.